Hello, this is Francis. Um, this is um, Melchizedek School. I uh, just want to say, uh, people don't know why they are born again. People just think that uh, the reason why they are born again is because they want to, they have to um, escape hell or they want to go to heaven. Uh, you know, God is showing us more mercy. God is showing us mercy every day. The Bible tells us that His mercies are renewed every morning. His faithfulness are forever sure. Um, so now we're beginning to understand that it's not about going to heaven, as it were. Um, it's not that we will not go to heaven. Um, we will, but the point is this. Whenever you put your hope in heaven as your final destination, there's a problem there. Because your final destination cannot be going to heaven. Your final destination is going to the Father. That's what Jesus Christ told us in the book of John. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going back to the Father. I came from the Father, I'm going back to the Father. And he said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. He says, if it were not so, I would have told you. I won't lie to you. So, looking at, looking at the way believers have received this concept of Christianity, I see that we are missing a whole lot. You know, um, why do I say this? First of all, when we read the Bible, we don't, we read it like a novel, we read it like a, a history book, we, we read it, you know, hurriedly, and we are not able to understand that the Bible is not a history book, it's not a, um, a, um, a literature. The Bible is speaking about the person. The Bible has the word of life in it. It has the, the word of God and the word of life. Uh, what I mean by that is that when you engage the Bible, when you engage God's word, inside God's word, there's a life there. Now, looking at the Bible, you see that it gives us an account of the beginning, which is Genesis. It gives us an account of um, the creation of man. It gives us an account of you know, the journey of man from his fall okay, to um, um, the time when God had to destroy the world in the book of Genesis chapter 6 because of the multiplication of sin uh, and wickedness. And then we see how um, you know, God gradually manages man you know, from the offshoot of the flood in the book of Genesis chapter 6, where um, Noah and his family were saved. And then God gradually began to groom and crop another generation you know, and um, uh, he found a man called Abraham. Um, we, we see all that. So basically, you see that the Bible is divided into different parts. Um, there's the book of Psalms, there's the book of Proverbs, there's the book of um, Job, and it uh, just goes on and on. And like. So even though it's a compilation of... of um, Accounts. What we are supposed to do is not just read the books um, as if it's a history book or a, just an account, but rather there is life in the Word. Praise God. Because it's teaching us there's something that God is trying to bring across to us. Hallelujah. So, going back to what I said before, the Bible is not a history book. It's not a Jewish book. It's not a, a Spanish book. 
uh, the Bible or the Word of God is God trying to transfer His life to you and I. I hope that makes sense. That God is trying to transfer His life to us. But uh, I don't want to get go ahead of myself. But you see, those of us who have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, who are born of God, I want us to understand something. That the fact that we read accounts in the Bible, we read about the things that people like Joshua, Caleb, uh, David, and all those heroes of faith, the fact that we read about what they have done doesn't mean that we can just wake up and just expect to, you know, do exactly what they have done or do more. It doesn't work that way. It's good for you to, first of all, when you hear or get an account of what someone has done, like any of these heroes of faith, what I would expect us to do is to first look at the life of the person. How did the person get to where he um, got to? How did Moses come about using his rod to divide the Red Sea? How did Moses come about receiving the Ten Commandments or the Commandments? Or how did um, Moses come about the fact that he could do all those miracles in Egypt? He didn't get there. just because or just by being um, an Israelite. There were so many Israelites. He got there because first he was called and then secondly he was trained. You cannot achieve anything without training. You have to be trained for you to be able to execute professionally. I just want us to understand something because once we, as believers, we, we just think that just with the name of Jesus, you can just run with it. You can't run with the name of Jesus when you do not believe in the name of Jesus. And believing is not just saying, oh, I believe. No, it doesn't work that way. There has to be a deep interaction or intimacy with the word or with the name of Jesus, so that you have a revelation or a rema of the power in the name of Jesus. You can't just use the name of Jesus, oh, uh, I command you to live in the name of Jesus. What is in the name? How did that name become so powerful? You and I need to understand these things. I just want us to, you know, I, I don't want us to be running helter skelter, you know, just running off because we've been given the name. Who did Jesus hand over his name to? It's his disciples. So if you are a disciple of Jesus, then you must be someone who is disciplined after his pattern or after his life. That's what discipleship is all about. You can't be running helter skelter. You can't be running up and down the streets, going to uh, your business, doing everything that you're doing, and then you think you can just use the name. You have to understand the authority in the name. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to beat us down. I'm not trying to um, discourage us from using the name. The name has been given to you. It, once you are born from above, that name has been given to you and I. But I believe that it will be good for us to understand 
the power in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What did Jesus do? How did he achieve or how did he come to that place where the Bible will say, and the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. There's a reason why all the knees must bow. There's a reason. It's because he has attained an excellent name, the Bible tells us. More excellent than that of angels. So you see that there was something that he did. There was a pathway that he followed. There is a life that he lived. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am always excited when I see eunuchs. You know, I see a lot of Christians who uh, say they want to be like Joseph or they want to be like Daniel without understanding that these people, these men, were not ordinary men. They did not fellowship with the world. No, they didn't. They were eunuchs. They were dedicated to the things of God. They were dedicated to the covenant. They understood the covenant and they lived and they walked by the covenant that they had with God. We as believers, we don't access our covenant. We do not understand the covenant that we have. Hallelujah. I just want to, you know, help us to know how to walk the life that we have been called to. Praise God. You cannot be a doctor without training to be a doctor. You cannot be an engineer without training to be an engineer. It doesn't work that way. You can't just wake up because um, you like to, because you like to, um, um, you like to, you know, take care of people and think you can be a doctor. Or because you like to uh, build things or you're fascinated by um, maybe some engineering uh, things and then you just say, oh, I'm an engineer. No, you have to train. There's a process. The same thing with the priest. The same thing with the believer. There's a training process. There's a process where you have to learn and you have to grow. So it's very important for us. We cannot spend time busy ourselves with all the things of this world and then expect our Christian life or our Christian work to work for us. No. You must be dedicated to prayer. You must be dedicated to the Word. You must be dedicated to the covenant that you have with God. You must understand the covenant you have with God. So going back to, going back to what I was saying, people like Moses. Moses was trained <laughs> for years. Hallelujah. Not one year, not 10, not 20, not, <laughs> not 30, at least 40 years of training, at least. Praise God. Hallelujah. As a Jew, we know that Jews, the first thing they do when they, when they have a child is to begin to train the child in the Torah. Now you and I did not undergo that kind of training. We went to kindergarten and went to the public schools or went to the private schools or went to the private schools. Amen. So you can't expect to engage God's word and expect it to work for you when your heart is somewhere else. My brother, my sister, we need to take time, pull back, just reason with me today. We need to spend time in prayer. We need to spend time in God's word. We need to spend time in meditation. We need to spend time studying God's word so that the world can see that we are really interested. The book of Hebrews chapter, um, I think chapter 4, 
It tells us that the word of God is quick and is powerful and that it's sharper than any two edged sword, piercing to the dividing us on our soul and spirit, bone and marrow. And it says it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So the word <laughs> is a discerner. The word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the person that is engaging God's word. The word of God is a person, it's a personality. His name is Yeshua, the son of the living God. So he will check your heart. What do you want? How much time do you want to spend with me? The Bible tells us in the book of Genesis that in the cool of the evening, he would come down and the voice of the Lord God will walk in the garden. Hallelujah. How much time would we want to give to God's word so that it can begin to respond to us? Praise God. So we see that for the word of God to work for you, you must, first of all, understand that there is life in the word. You must believe in God's word. And then you must be willing to spend time so that you can be trained by his word. The Bible tells us that when Jesus was uh, talking concerning God's word, he says, you have led me through the pathway of life. For in, the, in your presence is fullness of joy. So he was led. Praise God. Now look at the book of Romans chapter 8. It says that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The book of Psalm 119 says that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Praise the Lord. I'm just hoping that you, you and I would take time and actually engage this thing. Don't just read the Bible, you know, casually. Try and live inside the Bible. Try and live inside God's Word. Try and meditate and engage what the word is saying and then it will be good for us to understand that it's an account okay it's an account just like the epistles the epistles is a summary it's not the it's not the full you know robust um, account of all that happened is a summary. So if we learn to study God's word by you know, going into it, living in it, receiving what it has to give to us, understand that it's an instruction that is given. Understand how to discern and implement the instructions taking time to meditate taking time to yield to the spirit of god so that he can be able to help us understand what the writer is saying at what what is the context of what the writer is saying so that it would help us to understand exactly what was in the mind of the Spirit of God? What is the Spirit of God trying to deal with in this particular uh, issue or this particular time? And then how are we going to receive God's Word? Because a lot of times we study God's Word without understanding that the Word of God is not just for instruction, not just for obedience, but it's for obedience that help you and I to become what the Word is saying. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I'm hoping that 
I've been able to make a little bit of sense, you know, in what I have just shared with us um, today. Praise God. First of all, let's always understand not to jump into doing stuff that we have seen people like Elijah, people like Moses, people like um, um, Elisha, and people like Peter or Paul. The fact that we have the word of God and we have the name of Jesus doesn't mean that we can always or casually just dump the name somewhere. And then um, when we are, there's a need, we would have uh, tried other things and they didn't work, then we'll not remember the name of Jesus and we'll go to where we left it and pick it up and expect it to work for us. Things don't work that way. Hallelujah. We need to have respect, have trust and believe in what God's word is trying to deliver to us. And we have to try to learn how to meditate in God's word. Spend time meditating, spend time praying, uh, spend time asking the Lord to help us through the Holy Ghost how to understand what he's actually saying. And I said, we should try to live in the word. Hallelujah. Don't forget that Moses didn't get to where he could part the Red Sea. <laughs> Just by you know, taking a rod and hitting the Red Sea uh, with one hand and uh, hamburger in the other hand. Oh no. That's what is called fasting. That's what is called waiting on the Lord. That's what is called um, studying God's Word. That's what is called engaging God's Word. Engaging the person of our Lord Jesus. Engaging the person of the Holy Spirit. Like I said before, I'm not trying to discourage, but rather I'm trying to help us to, you know, not just you, but me also, to be lowly of heart so that we can be able to learn Christ and so that we can be able to receive our inheritance because we cannot receive our inheritance when we are busy looking for other things. You have to focus to be able to receive that which was made available for you and I. So let's not forget that before Jesus started his miracles, it took him 30 years. 30. <laughs> 30. Same thing with uh, John the Baptist. The Bible tells us that there was a time of his showing to Israel. But before that time of his showing to Israel, there was a time of preparation. Same thing with our Lord Jesus. Same thing with all the prophets. Praise God. If you must, if you must live your life, if you must attain the heights that you and I would wish to attain, we must understand that there's a time of training. There's a time where we have to prepare ourselves. I'm hoping that a few of these scattered words would help you and I to have a proper hold, foothold on the things of God. Hallelujah. God bless you.